Well, good evening. We've got our Bibles with us tonight. Please, could we turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24? Luke's Gospel 24. A wee bit extra than I expected to do tonight. I remember having to do that in a meeting once before. There was no organist turned up and they asked me what I play. So I played and then I had to speak afterwards. And I remember a man going out past me and he says, playing and preaching. He said, someday we'll find something you can do. So, so hopefully not the same tonight. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We'll start to read at verse 36, please. Scripture says, and as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? Why do, you, why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it, and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Finishing our reading at verse number 49. Let's just bow together. A moment of prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you this evening for everything thus far. We're thankful, Lord, for these pieces and song that we have heard tonight from our brother. We're thankful, Lord, that we can say, my Jesus, I love thee. My Lord, we pray that that would be a prayer from every soul in our gathering this evening. I love thee because thy first loved me and paid my redemption when nailed to the tree. Lord, we're thankful for that redemption that you've given to each one of us. We're thankful for that gift that you've given to each one of us. And Lord, we pray now as we open up the scriptures together. Lord, may you, put, may you be pleased to give us that, uh, your, pre- your presence this evening, we pray. It's your presence we crave your presence we need. So Lord, we pray for you to come among us today. We pray, Lord, that you will fill me with your spirit once again. We pray, Lord, as we open up this passage together, may we know your presence among us, for we do ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. We turn this evening to a portion of scripture that really does set out a very important verse, if ever we were coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. You know, we can all read the Bible. We can even all study the Bible. But it's important that we understand the truths of the Bible. You see, today, Bible scholars will read the Bible. Lecturers will read the Bible. Dare I even say Bible critics will read the Scriptures. But that doesn't mean a thing if we want to attempt to determine the truths of the Bible. You see, reading the Bible doesn't make you a Christian. In the same way that reading the Financial Times doesn't make you rich. And believe me, I've tried. I would read that paper from cover to cover if it helped. But you see, it doesn't make me rich. The same way as reading the Bible does not make me a Christian. With that in mind, what I aim to leave with us this evening. I aim to leave with us the words in verse number 45. And I trust that we can read them together. It says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. That they might understand the Scriptures. That's what I mean about reading the Bible. Understanding the Bible. Understanding what God has to say to every individual here this evening. This passage was written at the end of the Gospel accounts of Jesus' life. Jesus had been crucified at this stage. Jesus had risen again at this stage, and now Jesus was standing among his disciples. He had come back to this earth to them. It was here that Jesus talks lovingly to his disciples. He came back into the room. He revealed himself to them. And here was the disciples, possibly feeling deflated, possibly feeling low. 
But here he was giving them words that would propel them into the next phase of their life. The next phase of their great commission. Look at 46 and 47 again. It says that it is written that it behoved Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached. Or in other words, Christ should suffer on the third day, rise, and that forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed. That's what that word behoved really means, that we should be coming, that we should be proclaiming the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It's why we're holding the gospel meetings. It's why we had tent missions in Tamnamore. It's why we have gospel missions up and down the country, is to proclaim that repentance of sins starts at the cross. So the words of this great commission burning in our hearts, it's why we are gathered here this evening. It's why we have this meeting on this evening, not just for someone somewhere to go on a Sunday night. It's not just so there's a, a light on in this church because it's a Sunday night and there should be a light on for the cars passing down past. It's because we have the opportunity to preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But friend, this evening, can I say it means nothing. It will mean absolutely nothing to your soul this evening unless verse 45 is a reality to you, unless you understand the Scriptures, unless you understand the truths of the Scriptures that we will consider, unless you understand that Jesus took your place, not a place, but unless He took your place, unless you understand that He paid your cost, not a cost, and unless you understand that Jesus wants to be your Savior not a savior. That's the personal message of the gospel we preach. It means nothing unless we know that we need Jesus Christ. Unless we know that Jesus forgave our sins, should we come to him. That's the problem. It's the problem with the gospel message, I believe, in this country, because we know it too well. We understand it sometimes too well, and yet we haven't got a proper understanding of it. And men and women can get up out of gospel missions and get up out of gospel meetings and walk out through the door. Friend, whatever reason you are here tonight, understand the words that we are dealing with. Understand the seriousness of the words we are dealing with. Perhaps you're here this evening because you've been asked to come. Perhaps you come here uh, out of loyalty. You see, the disciples were asked to be here. The disciples were asked to come to this room to wait and to tarry in Jerusalem. And maybe that describes someone this evening. You're here because you've been asked to be here. But you see, the disciples didn't really know why they were there. Maybe didn't understand why they were there. As far as they were concerned, Jesus Christ was dead. He had risen again, but yes, he was dead. They didn't understand fully what Jesus meant by he would come again. They didn't understand fully about his, his resurrection from the dead. But then, then the words of verse 45 were made real to them, that he opened their understanding. They opened their understanding. And all of those words were made extra special for some in our gathering this evening. No longer just words on the pages of your Bible. No longer words coming from the pulpit on a Sunday night but words that are understood by the heart this evening. Words that go straight into your hearts and, and help you to understand your need of a Savior. The Scriptures need to be understood fully these days. The commentator Albert Barnes could say, only God can open the mind as to fully understand the Scriptures. Only He can overcome our prejudices uh, to open our heart to receive the Word as a little child. And surely that's what we need in these days. No big theological terms. No big fancy book learning. Just an understanding of the Scriptures. The understanding as that of a little child. The simplicity of a child saying, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. I forgive me of my sin. Make me ready for heaven. Friend, it's a simple message. It's a simple message we preach because it was a simple message that was given. And yet in men's and women's hearts this evening, it's the hardest message to try and understand. Why is that? When Jesus Christ has said, whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as a little child. 
as a little child. You might ask this evening, why is it important to understand the Scriptures? 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says, all Scripture is given of inspiration of God. So we're dealing this evening with words from God, important words from God, words that have been preserved down through the centuries because they have come from the mouth of God. You might ask this evening, why do we need the Scriptures? Well, 2 Tim Timothy 3 and 15 says, as from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The very crux of why we have these meetings this evening, that the gospel message is able to make thee wise unto salvation. But maybe this evening you're saying, why is it needful for me? Why is it needful for me to understand the Scriptures? Friend, that's the warning message I seek to leave with you this evening. Perhaps happily going along your daily life, not really considering the Bible too much, not really understanding the seriousness of the gospel message and not understanding why it is important to me, me personally. If you're saying this evening, why do I need the Bible? Why do I need this God that you're talking about? Well, we can turn to the Scriptures this evening to understand that. It's because of 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. It says the God of this world has blinded, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's you. Unsaved soul this evening, that's you. He's blinded the minds of those that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, the devil has blinded the mind and has blinded the mind of many a man and woman down through the years, not caring about the gospel message, not considering your need fully, not understanding your need fully. Friend, the eyes have been blinded. Oh, he might allow you to keep coming to church. He might allow you to keep coming to missions. He might allow you to listen to the gospel message, but as soon as your heart starts understanding it, as soon as you start believing that this message is for me, the old devil starts to slip that mask back over the eyes again. Starts to slip it back down again. And friend, we're sitting in blindness. We're sitting in darkness. Oh, he'll tell you, just think things over. Have a wee think about it. Don't jump into too much. You're okay as you are. You don't need to listen to that stuff. Perhaps even the common theme today, that Bible's outdated anyway. It's outdated. Friend, the God of this world has blinded. And he's blinded many a man and woman today. And he's, bl he's blinded them for centuries. Fear not. Fear not. Because that verse doesn't stop there. That verse doesn't stop like that. 2 Corinthians 4, 5, and 6 says, For we preach not ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord. It would be a sorry day for the lifeboat if I stood up here to preach Dean Caskey. If I stood up here to preach the words of man, but I preach, preach Christ Jesus the Lord, it says, for God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. God has commanded the light to shine forth here tonight. God is moving this evening from pew to pew. He has promised that he's in the gathering where the twos and threes are. And he's moving from pew to pew. He's commanded the light to shine forth. He's commanded the light to give knowledge of the glory of God. And friend, this evening, he can still perform verse 45 for you. He can still open your understanding. He can still help you to understand the, the, the person, personal aspect of verse 45. Oh, we need the Holy Spirit to be working in these days. We were looking at it this morning. And we, we were looking this morning, we need the Holy Spirit to move across this land. Friend, this evening, let's bring it a little closer. We need the Holy Spirit to be moving in our gathering this evening, to be moving in our gospel meetings, to be moving in our gospel missions in these days. Because without the Spirit, there'll be no conviction. Without understanding, men and women will be perishing today. We're going to look at uh, three or four areas that's important to understand. So let's this evening open God's word to understand. What must I understand from the scriptures? What must I understand from the scriptures? Number one, first thing you must understand is that there's a separation. There's a separation. The reason this world is in the state it's in is because of sin. When God created this world, he created a beautiful garden. He created Adam and Eve. He created the animals. They lived in harmony and peace 
In that beautiful garden, Genesis 1 and 31 says that when God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. It was very good. So when he created that beautiful garden, no sin whatsoever, and we turn to Genesis 3 and verse 1, and it starts off, it says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. See, that old serpent made his way to Adam and Eve. He said, he started off with that little word, that little word of doubt. He says, yea, hath God said. Did God really say that, Adam? Did God really mean that, Eve? And with one act of disobedience, one act of sin, that harmony was broken. Separation came down into that garden. A separation that has rebounded down through the years, right now to 2015. Genesis 3 and 9 says, Adam and his wife hid himself, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, where once they walked in unity, where once God came down in the cool of the day into that garden. And now they hide themselves. No longer the closeness, no longer that close friendship that was there. A separation that Isaiah 59 and 2 could say, but your iniquities have separated. Your sins have separated between you and your God, and your sin has hid his face from you. There's a barrier between us and God this evening. And when we understand that, we understand the seriousness, because Jeremiah 5 and 25 says, your iniquities have turned away these things. Your sins have withholden the good things from you. Adam and Eve hid themselves from God. Why? They were ashamed. They were ashamed. They couldn't stand in front of a holy God. Friend, this evening, that's not just for Adam and Eve. Every one of us in this gathering this evening should be hiding ourselves from God. Every one of us, Habakkuk could say that there are purer eyes than to behold iniquity. Purer eyes. See, the pathway to heaven is still broken. It's still broken for the majority of people in this world today. But praise God, there's a remedy. Praise God, there's a remedy. But unless you understand the scriptures that you can't get to heaven in your own strength, you're trundling towards a lost eternity of hell. The pathway is still broken. So unsaved, if you haven't asked Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins, then this still means separation for you. And from the mouth of Jesus Christ... John 8 and 21, it says, Die in your sins, and whither ye go, I ca ye cannot come. Understand it this evening. Understand the separation. The warning's in black and white. Sin has caused a separation. A separation that started in the Garden of Eden. Luke 13 and 5, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Romans 3 and 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6 and 23, For the wages of sin is death. Friend, this evening, do you understand the Scriptures? Do you understand the separation? I urge us this evening to get a grasp of the seriousness of it. Will you allow sin's curse to ensnare you any longer? Will you allow the God of this world to slip that mask down over your eyes again this evening when the voice of the Savior is tenderly calling that heart of yours once again, telling you of your need of salvation, showing you the separation, helping you to understand the separation? Will you allow that mask to be dropped back over your eyes once again? What do I need to understand? I need to understand there's a separation. Secondly, I need to understand there's a sacrifice. There's a sacrifice. We were looking at it this morning around the table. Isn't it great to know that God hasn't left us without a hope? Isn't it great to know that God hasn't left us exactly where we deserve, wallowing in our own sin this evening? God hasn't left us awaiting that day where he will come back and he will destroy this old earth and everything that's in it. God has given us a way. And once we understand there's a separation, let's understand the sacrifice. See, a sacrifice is described as a substitute. A substitute's taking the place of someone else. In the Old Testament, it involved the shedding of blood from a spotless, pure, undefiled lamb. But we don't live in the Old Testament age. We live in the New Testament age this evening. A new sacrifice is required. 
a new sacrifice for sin was needed. Jesus was that sacrifice. Jesus was our sacrifice. Ephesians 5 and 2, Christ also has loved us and hath given himself for us as a sacrifice. Friend, this evening, take a minute and think of those words. Don't let them just run past your ears. Don't let them get lost in the air all around us. Because Jesus Christ has given himself a sacrifice. 1 Peter 1 and 18 says, For as much as ye know that ye are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but, but with the precious blood of Christ. See, Jesus Christ gave up his life. No one took it from him. Jesus Christ stepped into that gap. No one pushed him to the cross. Jesus Christ was nailed to that cross. And at any time, he could have called 10,000 angels. The hymn writer could say he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world, to set him free. But he died alone for you, for me. Friend, this evening, understand the scriptures. Understand the scriptures. There was no other hope, no other way of salvation. Listen again to our sorry predicament in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. Death is what we deserved. Death was the punishment. Death is what was required. And instead, we had John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So the old wages of sin that we should have been handed was death. And yet we were given Jesus Christ that we should not perish. Praise God, he loved you so much. Praise God, he loves the sinner tonight. He still loves the sinner tonight. He hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. And praise God, he's calling once again tonight. A sacrifice of such enormity. And yet men and women pass it off with just a shrug of their shoulders. Men and women have heard it time and time and time again. And it becomes almost of none effect to them. Friend, this evening, let's understand it. Let's understand the seriousness of what we're dealing with here. The scriptures could say that they opened their understanding that he might understand the scriptures. I'm not saying anything this evening that's not taken directly from the scriptures. So we need to be understanding everything we hear. Isaiah 53 and 7 says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Isn't it time this evening that we ask God to help us understand the scriptures? Dear unsaved friend this evening, isn't it about time that we ask God to help us? He knew there was a separation. That's why he gave the sacrifice. That's why he gave the sacrifice. But do you understand? It was for you. It was for me. That's the personal aspect of it. Do you understand that separation is leading you to a lost eternity? But praise God tonight, do you know that the sacrifice is there to save you from a lost eternity? The hymn writer could say there is a sacrifice from sin. There is amazing grace. There is a change that comes within each time the sinner prays. There is a cross that's bloodshed, but the story does not end, for there is a tomb that's empty, and it's the only way there is. Friend, this evening, we point this evening to the bloodstained cross. Praise God we don't stay there. We point to the empty tomb. He's not there. He's seated at the right hand of the Father this, morning, this evening. What's he doing? He's making intercession for your soul. Making intercession for you this evening. Calling and calling and calling. Why? Because behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. What do I need to understand? I need to understand there's a separation. I need to understand there's a sacrifice. Thirdly, I need to understand there's a second coming. I need to understand there's a second coming. This old world is wrecked and ruined, destroyed by sin. Praise God, we're only here for a short time. 
We're only here for a while. Jesus has promised he will return. Titus could say, God, who cannot lie? Jesus had promised he's going to return. For everyone? Sadly not. Sadly not. Why? Because of the separation. Because of the separation. When Jesus Christ comes back for his own, he's taking the saved church back to heaven. He's taking those that have seen the separation. He's taking those that have seen the sacrifice. And he's taking those who's awaiting the second coming. Praise God this evening, this gospel meeting is here to tell you about that great day. This meeting this evening is here to warn you that this great day is one day closer than it was yesterday. That it's ours closer than it was this morning. A day in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, a day when 1 Thess Thessalonians 4 and 16 could say, For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout. This demands understanding. Demands understanding. Because this day is drawing closer. On save this evening. Are you ready? Are you ready? Have you thought what will happen when Jesus Christ comes to take the sea of church back to heaven? If you haven't, if you haven't given it much thought, or, or if you've passed it off in previous nights, then that's why we warned you of that verse in 2 Corinthians, that the God of this world has blinded. The God of this world has blinded your mind. Up until now, that verse could be written about you. Up until now, that verse fits perfectly. Up until now, you've maybe thought about it. But you've left it. You've left it to another night. There's still a few nights left of the mission. And the mission ended. There'll still be other gospel nights. And now this one's about to end. Friend, this evening, realize there's a separation. Realize there's a sacrifice. Realize there's a second coming. Realize that, that life of yours this evening, as we quoted this morning, that life of yours is hanging over the precipice of hell. Hanging by a thread. With that thread about to break. Friend, this evening, understand the scriptures. Don't let blinded minds hold you back any longer. Don't let, let sin hold you captive any longer. Very quickly, what do I need to understand? Understand the separation. Understand the sacrifice. Understand the second coming. But finally, understand the solution. Understand the solution. Acts 2 and 21, as came to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We don't have to leave our meeting this evening on a negative note. We don't have to leave it on a negative note because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not might be saved. Not possibly could be saved. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Except ye repent. Friend, this evening, I don't care what's held you back in the past. Tonight, Will you leave it behind? If it be a family member that you're afraid of, of stepping out, pray that the Lord will help them to understand. Help you to understand the dangers of walking back out through that door when the voice of God is calling that soul of yours. Full repentance at the cross of Calvary. Friend, this evening, will you see your need? Will you understand the scriptures this evening? Understand that Jesus died for you. Understand that Jesus gave his life for you. My friend, this evening, can you say with your hand on your heart that Jesus Christ is coming back for you? Amen. We'll close tonight just in a word of prayer.
I urge us this evening as we draw to a close just to, to think over those words that we've been dealing with this evening. Understanding the separation. Understanding the sacrifice. The sacrifice that was made just for you. Understanding the second coming, but understanding the beauty of the solution. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the solemn words that we've been looking at this evening. And dear Lord, as we draw another meeting to a close, as the stillness of the message is left, we pray, Lord, that you'll continue to speak on to souls. And the voice of man is silent. We thank you, Father, that you continue to speak. You've done it in the past. We pray that you do it once again. Lord, we pray that men and women will understand their need of salvation. We pray that you will open up minds this evening, that they might understand the scriptures. Help them to understand that sin's curse have separated. Sin's curse has blocked that path to heaven. But dear Lord, show them the sacrifice. Show them the middle cross of Calvary. Show them the perfect sinless Son of God hanging in their place. Lord, show them the second coming. Show them that your coming is a day closer than it was yesterday. But Lord, show them the solution. Show them that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Take us to our homes in safety, we pray. Keep us safe until we meet back in this place again. For we do ask it in your name. Amen.